The machine operator can interact with the application program by means of externally wired controls from a pendant or control panel. This video explains how the application program can be configured for operator interaction with the machine. The cycle start control is used to activate a physical action from the machine such as moving stages from a manual control dialog or initiating an automatic G-coded sequence. Operator safety should be the primary concern for the machine designer. For this reason, the cycle start control should be designed to avoid accidental actuation. Using a single keystroke or a mouse snap would be exceptionally dangerous. With this in mind, when configured to use the keyboard for cycle start, Ability Systems G-Code controller requires the simultaneous depression of two keys, Control Shift and F2. Alternatively, cycle start can be actuated by means of an external switch. When you uncheck the Keyboard Start Switch field, a field entitled Indexer LPT Command to Query Start Switch appears. Any indexer LPT command that reads the status of an input signal can be used. However, since the state of the auxiliary input line is indeterminate when disconnected, it will not fail safe if the switch becomes accidentally disconnected. Our demo machine uses a scan command explained in the indexer LPT manual in the chapter entitled Switch Scanning and Joystick in a manner that fails safe. When the switch is open or disconnected, the query result is zero. When the switch makes contact, the query result is one, as configured here. Also in the interest of safety, G-Code Controller makes sure that the query result is false before acknowledging it to be true. This prevents the cycle start action from flying through a menu selection if the switch was inadvertently activated. It also keeps the switch from being unsafely rigged. For additional safety on some machines, it may be desirable to require the operator to use both hands to activate cycle start. When the Require Two Start Switches checkbox is checked, additional fields appear for the second start switch. G-Code Controller discourages rigging by making sure both start switches are not activated before acknowledging that they are both activated for cycle start. A diagnostic menu is provided to check the operation of the cycle start input. The feed hold feature was demonstrated in part five of this series entitled controlled and uncontrolled stopping. It is an essential component of most control systems. Switch wiring is explained in the Indexer LPT User's Guide in the section entitled Feed Hold. The feed hold switch permits motion when the circuit path is completed through the switch. Thus the feature fails safe, which is to say motion will be arrested when the switch opens or if the switch becomes accidentally disconnected. Notice when you enable this feature, the dialog presents a list box allowing you to choose from indexer LPT signal groups that have not been allocated for stages or other uses. The joystick jog feature is an integral part of indexer LPT and a very powerful accessory to G-Code Controller. A separate session will be dedicated to explaining this feature. The Startup Commands dialog allows you to enter a list of indexer LPT commands and macros that automatically execute when the software loads. This feature provides for setting output signals at predictable levels and establishing initializing conditions such as an enabling sequence for spindle control, macros for setting machine variables such as tool pickup and drop-off locations are also accommodated here. MTNS codes can be customized to accommodate a large range of design requirements, simple and complex. For example, to customize an M code, snap over the M code menu, then select the specific M code that you wish to customize using the spin buttons. 
snap over the Configure button to bring up the configuration dialog for that M code. The List Editor provides for a sequence of Indexer LPT commands and macros. Indexer LPT commands are typically used to write to digital outputs or generate dwell time. Macros provide for things such as waiting on digital inputs, positioning stages to machine coordinates, and setting machine variables. The Passwords dialog helps guard against accidental setup modification. When you check Require Password, the entire menu will not appear when the software starts. You may gain access to that menu, however, using the Access selection from the File menu. Once the design of your machine is complete, the system menu is seldom accessed. You may wish to hide this menu with password protection. The Job Setup menu, however, is often accessed, but in some manufacturing operations, it's desirable to permit it to be changed only by qualified individuals. In this case, you may wish to password protect it as well. Finally, if any changes have been made from the system menu, the Save System menu will appear. This option saves the system information to a single configuration file, which is automatically loaded the next time the program is run. As mentioned in the previous session, the system menu pertains mostly to the design of your machine, and its configuration is not likely to change from job to job. System information, therefore, is accessed from a single menu and stored to a single file. Setup information that is more likely to change, however, is accessed from the Job menu and can be stored to files with unique long file names. This is the topic of the next session, entitled Job Setups. Music